Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Power Hour, starring Giles Tiger Thomas and myself, Ron Harris, guy behind the channel, Ron Harris Muscle. Today we're here to talk about the Arnold Classic South America, which for the longest time I was calling Arnold Classic Brazil, because it's always in Brazil, happening this weekend in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Giles, man, we just got the list. We literally just got the list. I, I got it like an hour ago on a Tuesday morning, um, and we saw some very, very, one big surprise on there that... Made me so, so happy. I'm talking about this guy's name, Jonathan De La Rosa, because I just interviewed him not even two weeks ago, and he was not planning on doing this. Hadn't heard a thing from the Arnold people. So I figured, oh, well, I guess we're not going to see Jonathan until he was talking about a show late, late in the season. But we're going to be seeing Jonathan very, very soon uh, after this airs, probably, uh, geez, the next day. I think we're going to put this out on Tuesday. So... Tell me, man, how, how excited were you to see Jonathan's name on that list? Well, now I've heard he's out. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, do you know what? In, yeah, in, 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 fi in fairness, I really, really should have messaged Patrick to because he would have told me straight away. Uh, I mean, if, if you want, I can message. I can turn my phone on now and I can ask him and we can find out. Probably he'll message me back straight away. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, do that. That's yeah. you know, this, is, uh, this is like live TV, even though we're not yeah. live. Yeah, because I saw that do that message, and I'm just going to keep talking for a second. Yeah, I yeah. saw the name, and then I saw it was scratched out, and like, well, is he or isn't he? Maybe mm -hmm. they were planning on it, but they didn't tell him. Man, yeah, ah, that sucks, man. Okay, well, we're starting off with. Uh... <laughs> Hang on, literally, I'm gonna False. just 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 keep. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see him in it, but. Um... Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's got to get a qualification, hasn't he? So maybe is this smart doing this show, given that he's got Rafael to go up against, who beat him at the Arnold Classic in Columbus? Well, you got point system back in place. It was only gone for one year, and he's got uh, fourth place at the Arnold USA, fourth place at the Arnold UK. Picked yeah. up some points there. I'm Good. looking at this list, and he's a very, very likely second place if he's in this show. Uh, after after Rafael, let, let, let me send a voice note to Patrick Tour, his coach. All right, so this is live, guys. This is actually happening as we speak. As we record. I, I, oh, hang on, I need to delete that now. Yep. Oh. <laughs> you were talking there. Uh, one second, okay. Oh, hang on. God, oh, this bloody thing. Hi, Patrick. It's Giles here, mate. Um, is John De La Rosa in or out of the Arnold? Well, let's call it Arnold Brazil. Uh, I'm literally recording live with uh, Ron Harris now. If you can just let me know with a yes or no. And uh, we'll let the all the fans know. All right, then, mate. Speak to you soon. Cheers. <laughs> there uh, you go. Well, yeah, Can't get well, more up to date than that, mate. No, we, we should find out before we're done recording. So we're <clears> looking <throat> now at uh, Raphael's Instagram. <clears throat> yeah. Got, let's see if there's anything. That's not really a physique shot. He's been uh, – so he's working with Neil Hill, but he's been very uh, – he doesn't post a lot of update pictures and videos like the other guys do. Yeah. Uh, he did very little. Look, that's an old one. Did very little on the way to, on the lead up to the Arnold uh, Ohio. So, hang on. Really... I, I had this from I had this from Neil Hill. Uh, what two three days ago? That was a recent pick. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. so that was from I put it on the Globe Muscle Instagram. Um, but that was like two or three days. He said there's no filters, no nothing. Um, and then Neil Hill sent me a voice note. Was it yesterday or the day before? And he said we've still got a lot of work to do, Giles, with you know like carving up and filling out and stuff because. Um, I mean, for me, Raphael is the favorite for this one, yeah. but um, Neil's like, and I'm kind of like, okay, I've just got it. He's, he's going to win this, but um, Neil's kind of like not counting his chickens and he's, he's just, you know, he's not taking anything for granted. So I think he really, because I, um, Raphael skipped the Arnold UK to do this one specifically, I, well, really to get the win and get the qualification. Plus mm. it's in Brazil as well. So he wants to get the win, you know, for, for national pride, for sponsors, for everything. I mean, it makes, it makes good sense. I mean, I was sad not to see what the Arnold UK but it makes sense that he's doing this one. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, you know, he's obviously been a very good friend of Flex Lewis for years. It looks like Flex was down there because Flex is now with his sponsor. Yeah, I saw you know, that. The name of the company, but they're, they're a huge company down there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, got, you know, congratulations to Flex, but clearly his his association with Raphael made, kind of made that possible. So yeah. these, these supplement companies down there, they're kicking ass. But Raphael has to be my favorite, even, even if Jonathan's in the show. I still have Raphael as my favorite. I mean, obviously, Me too. he was a very, very strong third place at the Arnold Ohio. Um, was not, you know, he, obviously he's not as massive as Samson uh, or Hadi in terms of square muscle per square inch. But geez, this guy is 
He's not missing a damn thing. He's just so I, I, I think he should have been called out with Hadi and Samson at the end. I think he was that good. I think he was that worthy. Because I know we all thought it was a kind of like a two man, two man race, but I think there's um, there's an argument for Raphael. Um, I'm not saying he should have beat Samson or could have beat Samson, but I think he was closer. You know, the gap between him and Samson, I think, was closer than, than it was between Hadi and Samson the, yeah. at the Arnold Columbus, anyway, not the Arnold UK, because the Arnold UK Samson really closed the gap. But um, I thought in the side shots, I thought he took Samson and Hadi. Wow. Um, and he looked um, and he looked very, very, very comparable in, in um, or very, uh, very strong in other poses as well. I mean, he doesn't really have I mean, he was probably he was a lot harder than Samson and he was a lot more pleasing than Hadi. But obviously, Hadi's just got that crazy, dense muscularity, uh, which is hard to combat against, you know. So um, I, 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 yeah, I think he's going to be at his all time best for this one. I think um, I think the goal was to um bring bring Rafael in his best for the Arnold Brazil because he because obviously the, um Neil's I think that was the first time Neil was working with him was it for the for the Arnold Columbus I believe so too I yeah think. so of course that's usually the the tryout and they did very very well there Rafael looked fantastic looked the best I think he's ever been yeah he was bigger his delts were bigger there was a lot of lot, lot going on more with his physique but I think they're going to really really um the, the goal was to really really nail it for this one because you know national pride early qualification um so if he gets this win here it's been a very very good comeback for him in 2024 they were third place at the arnold hopefully a win here and then he can just shut it down to the olympia because i think i think what we're seeing from rafael and what he, the, the, the improvements he's made since the 2022 olympia when he took 10th mm. i think um i think rafael could i, I think he's a, in he should be in a conversation for someone that could crack the top six this year oh 100 yeah I, I mean i think i mean i mean certainly he could i think he could jump jump at least realistically at least two to four spots um up from the olympia but like i said I, and if he keeps improving look at that shot there look at that look at yeah. that that one you go but go back go back yeah yeah look at that shot there i mean i mean you, you, you're telling me that that wasn't you know there, there's there's a huge gap between second and the top two and the third place because no, um no, I, no. yeah i think you should have i think you should be called out with that i know they like to do the top two at the end and they like to get the crowd going but i really think he deserved to be in that final call out mate what do you think Absolutely, and I mean, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, even I know that I know that if you do the height and weight calculations, Hadi and Samson are much are bigger than him, but he does not look much smaller than them when yeah. you look, when you look at that. He's, he's yeah. he doesn't need to be much bigger. A couple more pounds, maybe. Can you wow. can you show any side shots? Because I thought he looked That's absolutely cool. sensational. I mean, the back is where he kind of loses out to Samson and Hadi. Here I think. Go. Here we go. But look at the side shots. I think yeah. he takes them. I think he beats Hadi in those. Yeah, look at the hamstring drop. Yeah, look at that the 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 delt mass. The how do you yeah. and, and, all, and also I know I know I'm going to get shit for this, but he's wow. not pinning his delts like the other two. <laughs> how not, dare though. you? Come, I know he's I know. not. He's not, and I think that and his delts look look every bit as 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 big. And I mean, actually, there's more detail going on because he doesn't pin his delts. So. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to message Neil afterwards and, and commend him for for not doing that because it seems to be something that everyone is bloody doing. And 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 for me, it's um like I said, I know it's the thing I keep going on about, but it just annoys me and it's not it's just not needed. And it's um and all these things will play a part when they get to the Olympia and it is close, you know, because um you know everyone's going to be coming back um, improved hopefully and and hopefully coming at their best. So I mean, look at that. You can see all three heads in his rear door bicep there. Look. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm wondering how much better than this he can be. I guess he could be, you know, that if we're gonna if we're gonna really be picky, a, a little bit drier, a little bit more grainy in the glutes and the hamstrings, yeah. like like Hottie was, but he was certainly in better condition. That's a, that's a really good. That's a that's the best readable bicep I've seen on Samsung. Man. That looks really impressive. That shot. I thought they I still needed improvement in that shot, but it looks bloody fantastic there. But um, I think um, I think Rafael. I mean, Neil said it himself. He needs a lot more thickness in the back going on. To really, really go up to that next level now, like top six, top five Olympia. Yeah, I mean, he's not far behind. He's not. Yeah, I, I don't see him outside of the top six. Uh, if he looks as good as he did in Ohio, or a little bit mm. better, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. But he's he's our favorite. This, if he doesn't win the Arm Brazil, I'd be very sorry. South America, South America, I'd be what, very, what? very shocked. What is the deal with that? Because I've always called called it the Arnold Brazil, and I, I put that picture up that um, that Neil sent me the other day. That, that that photo I just showed you of Raphael. Yeah. And um, and I was trying to tag in. Arnold, I tried to type in search Arnold Classic Brazil, and it came up South America. And I had to check to make sure it was the same one. <laughs> so what, why why do they call it South America, and not Arnold Brazil? Because we've always referred to it as the Arnold Brazil. Well, the Arnold Europe was always held in Spain, correct? 
Correct. Yeah. So I think it's they're trying to encompass a continent. Oh like, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You know, but why wouldn't they call the Arnold Ohio uh, that one Arnold North America? Mm. Uh, I guess that's just going to be the Arnold Classic, it's the original Arnold South America. Yeah. The one that was in Af South Africa a couple didn't they? They called that Arnold South Africa. I yeah, they did. Yeah, they didn't yeah, they did. try to claim it was the whole representing all of Africa. And then the yeah. Arnold, uh, they had Arnold Australia a couple of years. But that's, they didn't they call were... it Australasia, did they? <laughs> well, that's Australia is a continent, I believe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was an A student in geography as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was okay. I, I, I did. A, I, I probably got A minuses or B pluses in that or something. But nice. uh, let's continue on down the line. Let's go to our next guy. <coughs> uh, he is, well, let's go to Tonio, man. Tonio, uh, Tonio Ooh. is my... Dark horse for this show. Uh, let's get his name up there so he's not Raphael. Yeah, uh, let's see. Let's see what he's got for updates here. No, 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 no. So here we go. This looks fairly recent. Ten hours ago, yeah, this is fairly recent. So, yeah, this he's put some size on. He was at 212. He won his first, first 212 show. I think it was his pro debut. And he's put on uh, something like 15, 12, 15 pounds since then, I think, by this point. I wonder if he's bigger than he was at the Olympia last year. What was he, eighth at Olympia last year? Eighth or ninth? Uh, he was. I know he was top ten. I couldn't tell you exactly. Yeah, he was, eight, he was eighth or ninth. I can't remember now. I think it was eighth. But um, I, for me, he was one of the um, he was one of the kind of the shocks of the Olympia last year. I thought it looked absolutely sensational. I think mm. for me, he's like the new Dexter Jackson. Yes. Um, yeah. The way he's kind of coming up slowly and steadily through the ranks. And I think he had some of the best back shots mm. at the Olympia last year. I thought his rear double bicep and his rear lat spread, I mean – if anything, his back is almost overdeveloped compared to the rest of his physique. So his back, I mean, look at that. I mean, that was at the New York Pro. Yeah, it's bigger but now. If you, yeah, but if, yeah, if you look at them from the, if you look at the shots from the Olympia, I mean, his back shots were like, you know, like they were comparable with Hadi and Samson and and Derek even. Do you know what I mean? And he's uh, he's really improved actually. He's really impressed me actually since he came up from the two twelve. Um, I'd like to see a bit more chest on him though. I think yeah, uh, yeah. I'd like to see a bit more because from the the front and the side is is impressive, but it's not as good as those back. I mean, those back shots are just lights out. Yeah, I want to. So there's the veins. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's almost there. He's he's still a young guy. He's very very young as a pro. Hmm. I is he, to, how old is he? Uh, I believe I want to say like 32, 33, But he's only oh, been. Wow. Wow. He's only done a handful of pro shows. He's still kind of figuring things out. He's doing that, well. That shape is just beautiful. I mean, you can't hmm. you, you can't train for that kind of shape and structure. You got it or you don't. Yeah. I like him. I think he's. I think he was a bit of a dark horse at the Olympia last year. I don't think anyone really saw him coming, being the kind of threat that he was. So I, I, I'm, I I've kind of forgotten about him since the Olympia. It's funny though because I'm I'm so taken up with other guys like Crizo and Andrew Jack. He's kind of the one that kind of slipped, like uh, Charles Griffin. He kind of slipped under the radar and did really well, you know, by making top ten at the Olympia. Because top ten Olympia that sets you that sets you apart even from pro show winners. Do you know what I mean? In mm. my my view. So. Um, yeah, I think he's um, – if he's improved, I think he's he, – he'll push Rafael, but I don't see him beating Rafael. No, he's he's been down there in Brazil, I guess, for a few weeks. He's cool. sponsored by one of those companies, so he's been training down there. And in Brazil, man, they, they've stepped it up. I mean, I don't know if we're going to be talking about uh, – well, we already kind of stopped talking about Kuwait, Dubai, but now I think Brazil has got to get into that conversation as far as these yeah. countries that are really supporting pro bodybuilding and the athletes. Yeah, oh, back is ridiculous. Yeah, his, his, his back is like he's, it's um, it's like a guy, it's, it's like a back of a guy 30, 40 pounds heavier, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Three, I mean, I, I would almost say you know, stop training your back, Tony, but don't do that, of course. No, no, no. But I think he needs to, yeah, I, I, for me, I just like to see a little bit more, bit more fullness going on in the chest because his shoulders are fantastic, his arms are fantastic. Yeah. Um, and he's got, he's, but I just, uh, from, you know, the front and back, there's a bit of a disparity there. But I mean, I'm really nitpicking there because, uh, I think he'll be a solid second. Yeah, it, it's funny because it's almost 99% of the time it's the other way around. Most guys have a really thick chest and their back is shallow. Mm. So I, I don't think it's going to be a impossible task for him to bring that up. Just needs a yeah. little little more thickness and it's going to match. I just want to get he, one of those he, shots. He like, does have great he does have almost suspicious levels of fullness in his shoulders, but you can see the line. So I don't think he's pinning them. No, they're they're a little stripey. <laughs> no, because they they're stripey. No, because thing is, sometimes when the muscle the muscle moves differently, when you can see what's filled with gear or whatever they put in there, usually just yeah. usually gear, isn't it? I mean, they don't really use synthol anymore. Um, it's um like the delts there. They, they look they look freakishly large, but it's still got all the lines and detail that I expect from someone. Look at the back. Look at yeah, that. That's that's what I was wanting to get to. That is, it looks like it's AI or something. 
he he needs to, he needs a nickname like King Cobra or something because like he is I mean he's he yeah the Predator is not I don't like that name I think it changed it change it to King Cobra mate. Do you think the uh, the, the ink the tattoos on the back take away at all? I don't even notice it to be honest. Yeah, they're kind of light. I mean, if they were, didn't even notice it. It's it's just a lot of line work. There's not a lot of shading in there, and I think that's what saves it from ruining what could other otherwise that could have really been a problem. But I think it's it's so light you don't even notice it. I think we're so used to seeing tattoos now. I'm completely blind to it now. <laughs> you know, unless like, um, what's that British guy, Rob Taylor, he's got completely covered. I mean, that looks a bit, that does actually hide some of the separation, that level of ink, you know, where literally everything is just, it just looks like a big black mass, you know, it's um, hmm. of, of ink, you know, it's, um, I, I, yeah, I think sometimes that can be distracting, but it's usually when, and plus the tannings are so good, the tanning sort of lotions now are so good, the pro tan, all these different tans, you know, um, are so good now that they don't even it kind of hides it now so but like i said i think we're just desensitized i've heard that there's some tanning product that covers tattoos completely that you would never even notice it okay let's go to the uh, most highly anticipated pro debut of the year they call him good Vito. his real name is vitali ogolnikov but we'll go with good Vito. how's that uh so yeah we were both surprised to find out i always assumed this guy was like 5'10", 6 foot. I think it was Miguel who said, no, he's like 5'6 or 5'7". Said he turned pro at 235, and he's weighing about 249 right now. Okay. So, I mean, this is a massive, massive guy. Just so full, so thick and round. Uh, let's go to something where we see the whole physique. Yeah, I don't think he's lacking. Those legs. <laughs> no, no, the legs. I mean, he, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I wasn't. I was actually, I've got to say, I was a little bit disappointed when I saw when he saw him turn pro. I felt like he didn't match up to what we were seeing on Instagram. Hmm. But uh, And now I'm seeing all these pictures and videos where, to me, he just looks out of this world. But I'm naturally suspicious because I've seen it so many times where they look so good on social media and then they get on stage and it's a disappointment. I mean, there he looks absolutely tremendous. I mean, yeah. I mean, and the thing is, he had, he's had, what was it? He was, what was it? 22, he turned pro, wasn't it? I remember seeing the, the video and pictures that um, Miguel sent us. Was it 22, it was wasn't it? Oh, I think it was last year because I won. Wow, it's 23. The guy in the red, he was competing against the guy in red trunks. I mean, there was no real competition for him, you know, and he was, he was good, but I felt like he lacked a bit of separation in the shoulders and the chest and stuff like that. And, um, but I mean, I'm, I'm anxious to see if he has improved, and if he has improved, um, I, I, it's hard for me to make a judgment until he steps on stage because in all his photos, he just looks like he looks like Mr. Olympia, you know. He looks like he'd, um, you know, it looks like you stick him next to Hadi or Derek or something like that or Samson, you know what I mean? But uh, I, I really, I, I've, I've kind of got him fighting for third place, yeah. um, but I'm, I'm, like I said, it's, it's hard when we haven't when this is actually his pro debut and. And what he'll be bringing to the stage, if he is 15 pounds heavy, it's going to be a completely new physique. So I'm excited to see him because he's um, there's a lot of lot of hype around this guy. He's kind of like the new Crizo or Nexilla, you know, of, of this year, I think, you know, because we've had Crizo 22, yeah. Nexilla last year. And I feel like he's the one that everyone, like the Nick Walker of, say, what was it, 2020, wasn't it, 2021? Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see what he's going to bring. Yeah, I think he's he was, last year he was on a trajectory to do exactly what Crizo had done the year before which was win the pro qualifier at about 80, 85%, win his pro debut and get his Olympia ticket at about 92.2% and then hit the Olympia at hundred percent. I think that was their plan because yeah. he was supposed to do, uh, I think it was the flex pro Italy or was it the franchise? He was supposed to do one of those. That's right. Yeah. 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 One of those right. late qualifiers, but he was guest posing and he jumped off the stage, had a little bit of a quadricep strain, not like a full tear or anything, but it was enough to screw up the prep and they decided to just bail out of the show. And I think this makes more sense. Cause you know, like I said, yeah. Brazil, Brazil is taking care of these people. This is an older prep shot. This is eight weeks do ago. You, do you think he'll be the, like a, like, like do a Nick Walker and actually just hit the ground running? I do. I mean, I don't uh, like Nick Zilla hit the ground running. I mean, even though he had been, yeah, a pro, he did. <laughs> he'd been a pro in the other league and everything, but this is Vito has never done any of the pro shows. He's a, was a legitimate amateur this whole time. Yeah. So I, I, as long as he's in great condition, I don't see him falling anywhere fifth, fifth at the very, very worst. At the yeah, very, I mean, worst. for me, he is like he, like you said, you had um, Crizo in um, what was it, twenty two? You had Nexilla twenty three. You had Nick Walker in what twenty one? Yeah, twenty twenty. You know, so and the thing is, all those guys did well right outside the gate. So, and I think people are putting him in that kind of category of expectation. 
So I think people are expecting him to come in and kind of potentially win this. And um, I, I think I think he will struggle against someone like a Rafael or... Um, yeah. But I'm interested to see how he compares to like a more seasoned competitor like Rafael Antonio, yeah. you know? I mean, I mean you know, Rafael's if... been Rafael's been around since 2017. Tonio has been around since, what, 2020? 2020, uh, 2020, maybe even earlier. Since yeah, was, it's been around a few years. I, was, I think it was 2020 where he came out and won his... Uh, it's pro debut. I was there. What show was that? Two twelve. Was it um, Indy? Chicago? Indy. Yeah, that's right. He won the Indy. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird year. Nobody can remember anything that happened in twenty twenty anymore. You notice that? <laughs> it's almost like it didn't. It's, we've all sort of blocked it out of our minds. Yeah, I was chilling. <laughs> all right, let's move. Let's move on to what do I got next on my list here? Ah, another big <clears throat> dude, William Martins. William Martins. Okay, so William has competed a few times as a pro. He's not a He's not a new guy, but uh, let's see what uh, what improvements he's showing. He's not working with Chad Nichols anymore, is he? Uh, it's hard for me to keep track when these guys. Yeah, I believe he was working with Chad Nichols, and now he's not. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that one. Okay. Well, I don't. He doesn't look any worse for wear. Oh, he's a big dude. Very, very big guy. This one. I love his side chest. Love his side tricep. Um, I think he struggles in some of the front shots because he's got a bit of a, a long torso and high lats. Um, so the frontal bicep is a weak pose for him, but his side chest is fantastic. Oh, chest. Look, at, look that. at that! Look at that! Look at that! And also, like even even like his, his lower body looks fantastic from the side, but his upper body flows really, really well. In fact, wow. I think I think of the, along with Akeem Williams and Rami, I think he's got some of the the best <laughs> side shots in the business right now. And also Raphael, because Raphael's coming on strong with the side shots. That side leg is insane. I mean, you don't you just don't see that because I see so many lacking hamstrings from the side. It's it's disheartening, but when I see this, that's like Tom Prince, the late Tom Prince right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 I, I mean, I see echoes of a bit of, um, if you squint, I mean, I see a bit of Dennis Wolf in his physique as well. Yeah, yeah. Not not, not a bad guy to be compared to. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's going to be, I think um, battling for third is with, with between him and um, uh, Vito. Vito, yeah. I mean, that, that's mm. going to be a great matchup. I could see, you know, another one of those, here's your two, here's your top two with uh, – Antonio and, and Raphael as their as their main top two comparison, and then yeah. I could see them bringing these two, uh, him and him and Vito, out for a uh, yeah, yeah. I think that do you know I, I think I'm I like all these top two like kind of final callouts, but it is a bit of a, a spoiler. For, although one with that one year when they brought out Steve Cooklow and Nick Walker at the Arnold, hmm. and then Cooklow ended up coming dropping what, third or fourth, wasn't yeah, it? And I, yeah. I, I mean it, it changed, didn't it? it Change around. Yeah. So, but um, I like, I, I think sometimes I would like to see what you're suggesting, bring out the third and fourth and let those guys fight it out as well. Because it's not only ever one contest going on in a, in a top six or a top 10. Sometimes there's like two or three big matchups that the crowd, that you know is close, that the crowd really wants to see. So it'd be nice to see if we're right. I'd like to see Tonio and um, Raphael. And then I'd like to see William Martins and Vito, because I think that'd be really exciting. It's a, sh it's a shame that Carlos pulled out of this one, isn't it? Because he, I'd love to have seen him in the mix and with these with these two guys. Yeah, I just saw on his Instagram. I believe his brother, his twin brother, passed away. Oh shit! Oh, yeah, so I mean, I hope I'm not inferring that right because Carlos Senior said my son's twin, so that would that would be his other son. I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. I hope oh, I'm his I twin hope brother. I'm Maybe uh, yeah, I mean maybe maybe it was somebody in the maybe it was a cousin or something that he considered to be like his like I've got I've got a a cousin and I kind of I kind of call him like my brother because he's the closest thing I've ever had to a brother. Yeah, well, regardless whether it's his brother or cousin, it's awful, and you know. Yeah. Condolences go out to condolences yeah. go out to. And also the stress of that as well, probably with the colitis, probably didn't help as well because you know family stress and stuff can really if you've got a medic underlying medical condition, it can really play havoc with um, those kinds of things. So I, he probably did. The, well, he did he, I'd imagine he definitely did the right thing by pulling out of this. So but, um, oh, hundred percent. You know, focus on family. Yeah. If your head's not in the right space, yeah, you can't be at your best. There's just no one. And I really like Carlos as well. I think he's a really, really good – him and his dad, they're both really, really good people. So we all, we only want – I mean, we only want the best for everyone anyway. But someone like Carlos, you know, you really – I'm, I'm really rooting for guys like that. I mean, there's so many shows I've been to where if I see Carlos and his dad in a crowd, they're the first people I go up to. <laughs> yeah, they're cool. You know, nice guys. Just, I just, you always, they're always in a good mood. They're always just, uh, just cool people, good people. I, I, I'm sorry to go on talk about the other subject, but I mean, do, do you think Carlos would do Detroit, or do you think that's too soon for him, or do you think he's going to put it right back? What's what's the when is Detroit? Two weeks next away? week, isn't it? Oh, geez, yeah, I think two it weeks. Is yeah, it's the fourteenth. It's yeah, yeah, next 14th. week. Oh, he might do it. Yeah, I mean, if he's 
if he's already prepped and everything, it would be a shame to just, you know, not do anything uh, yeah. if, if, if he could. Right, so this is another guy. Uh, Miguel gave us a preliminary list, Jefferson Santos. There's a couple. There's four four athletes from Brazil that I'm not super familiar with, but, you know, they, there's consistently good talent down there. And some of these guys surprise us. Like I remember some of these shows last the year and the year before where uh, – was it Fred Limo? Who's a, short, yeah. a couple of shorter guys that were just stacked with muscle? So this guy, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. You know, he looks like a, am I wrong? Is he looks like a master's to me. He doesn't look like a young guy, no. Uh, yeah. If I had to guess, I'd put him in his 40s, if I'm guessing. maybe. maybe I, I, you know, can I, I'm going to say something now. I wish guys would – Nick Walker does that. He pulls his trousers right down <laughs> when, he, when, he's, when he's doing like an upper body shot. And you can see like – you can see a little bit too much. Yeah, they want to show the uh, – what's that thing? What do you call that area now? The, uh, I don't want to use a, a – I got to think of a better way to say it. Uh, well, let's, gum. let's just say it's below the lower abs. Well, it rhymes with gum. Gum gum gutters. The the, the line that goes down, the, the two lines there. They want oh, to show okay, those. okay, okay. Gum. Uh, I, I just – Nick Walker does it, and it infuriates me. It's one of the many things that annoys me about Nick Walker, because you know me. I'm a Nick Walker hater. <laughs> oh, I think, I think you've established that you're not a Nick Walker hater. You know, I actually saw a, a really cool ex- – it was a funny exchange because Nick Walker made a statement about uh, Nexzilla, Ru- Ru- Rubiel, saying yeah. he has no lines, and he got blasted by the Rubiel, the Nexzilla wow. fan. Wow, he said – I mean, well, yeah, but I've, I've seen Rubiel. He does have lines, trust me. You know, you, um, Ronnie wasn't that impressed with Rubiel. I said, do you think he'll be like – and he went – he kind of went. Mm, it wasn't. It wasn't that impressed with him. But I tell you what, I said to Ronnie. I said, "Look, you got to see this guy in the flesh," mm-hmm. because I remember even when I was looking at photos and videos, I was like, "Yeah, he's good," but you know, the shape's a little bit funky. But when you see that guy in the flesh, he's an absolute, absolute monster. Because some guys you do have to see in the flesh. I think it's like it's like people don't say that think that Samson's as big as he is until they see him on stage, and then you realize how tall and wide and how big mm-hmm. his like his hands are big, his head's big. Is like he's just a. <laughs> Physically, he's he's just a he's a very large human, you know. And, and until you actually sometimes see them next to the the guys like the the Nick Walkers who are like these other guys who are like two fifty, you realize actually, you know, he really is like a like a three hundred pound guy on stage, you know. So he's, I think he's one of those. You just got to see him in the flesh. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm I'm very anxious to see Rubiel in in person competing. I do think his physique's got a long way to go. Where they're they're talking about him beating like Nick Walker, but that's a lot. Mm, a lot of the, no. a lot of his. <laughs> uh, that's the oh, yeah, majority yeah. of the posts. The majority of the responses were where he would kick Nick Walker's ass. I'm like, mm, no, he I, wouldn't. No, he my wouldn't. only concern with Rubiel is that he's working hard enough, and I know that sounds really, really harsh because Uh-oh. you know he's gone from kind of obscurity to unbelievable fame. And I see these these videos of him, pictures of him with with these man bags and shopping and on the beach and stuff. And I don't really see much stuff of him actually kicking ass in the gym. So I'm just really hoping that. He's really in the trenches doing a Dorian or a Ronnie, do you know what I mean? Just kind of cutting himself off and not being kind of distracted or detracted from the the kind of fame and the attention he's getting because like like he's getting a lot of um a lot of attention to do expos and a lot of sponsors are wanting to I just hope he's not getting too busy to the point where it's distracting him and taking him away from what he needs to do, and that's to improve his physique and really make a big impact because you know, with the right kind of, um, with the right work ethic and the, and, you know, and, and, and if he's distraction free enough, there's a guy that is, um, is, is absolutely could be, you know, like in, in a couple of years, he could be, you know, uh, right up there because the potential's there, but I just, I think we, there's a lot of expectation and I've heard he's doing the Dubai pro as well. Oh, good. I mean, why would you not do that? hundred grand. hundred grand. Yeah. So he's, um, yeah, so I just um, I just hope that he's 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 left alone enough by sponsors and fans and all these different um, obligations that he's actually got time enough to actually improve and train hard enough and compete and just kind of get in the zone and get in the trenches and do what he needs to do. Yeah, if I'm looking at him right here, and if I was if I were the one advising him, saying here's what you need to work on: stop working your neck. Do not ever do another neck. <laughs> Why would I mean it takes? It does, I don't think he does. I don't think he does trade it. I think he's I just. Saw he, pick, I saw a video of him with some harness around his neck and a bunch of weight on it. So yes, he does. But, <laughs> don't do that anymore, Rubiel. I would do leg, leg day once a month. I, would do I just um I hope he I because I mean I know he's obviously teamed up with Chris Cormier and Chris will Chris will put him on the right path. Chris yeah. will sort of work him hard and put him through. And I mean I've had some conversations with Chris about 
you know, like Chris, what Chris wants to do with his physique and how he wants to train him. And because he said to me, he said to me uh, at Prague, he said, Chris said, he said, look, he said, he said, that, that physique, you know, the improvements he's made, you should have seen him a year and a half ago. He said, when, I'm, when I met him at FIBO, he said he had no chest, no back. He says, wow. and um, like his form was kind of all sloppy. He says, no, so I've made sure that when he trains, he's isolating the chest properly when he's pressing and flying and stuff like that. Yeah. He said, and um, um, he said, you know, with, so, so he's a real responder when, you know, when he's, when he's training right and he's training consistently. So he's, he's a guy that could improve very, very quickly, you know, if he's given the right sort of, um, the right uh, sort of leeway to do so. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm getting down on the guy. I think he's young, he's still got... He can make those improvements. It's not like he's been doing this for 20, 30 years. Hmm. Didn't they, they were posting pictures of him just a few years ago when he wasn't that impressive at all, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a and regular. he's a nice kid, and he's a nice kid as well. I like him. I like Rubiel. He's a nice guy. I've got a good vibe from him, good, good, you know, good energy. So yeah, work in progress, work in progress. And you know, we're we keep talking about the next generation, like the guys two or three years from now who are gonna be at the top. And I think oh. we're seeing that he's gonna be in that, he's gonna be in that league in a couple of years. I don't see him there see yet. You see, the point, what I'm trying to say before is that I just hope that there's not too much expectation and too much, like, you know, distraction for him. Because mm -hmm. someone like him, he kind of needs to be kind of left alone for a couple of years just to sort of get his head down. And like, like Chris was out in Slovakia and he's got his wife and his kid and he's in his own little bubble. And, you know, guys like Dorian and Ronnie had their own little, you know, kind of their, their, their blinkers on in the life they had, you know. And Rubiel's getting a lot of attention and I just hope that he doesn't get distracted by that. That's basically what I'm trying to say because um, we've seen we've seen pros with a lot of expectation and future Mr. Olympia, and then pfft, it just it all fizzles out. So I just hope that the they're not that the, the sponsors aren't trying to pull him in too many directions um, to you know because because that wouldn't be good for his career as a bodybuilder. Yeah, we've we've seen that. I can't even count how many times, but. We put we put expectations on these guys. It's it's almost like a knee jerk reaction. It's like we anytime some great new talent comes along, next Mr. Olympia, top three Mr. Olympia. You know, we everybody can't be Mr. Olympia. Everybody can't be top three or top five Mr. Olympia. But yeah, you know, other if we didn't have that kind of speculation, what would we be talking about all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But uh, yeah, I just because um, imagine you're going from that like that level of popularity to like that. Like even when I was was chatting with him, and he says, "Literally, I'm sat here, and my Instagram numbers are going up every time wow. I refresh it." Like he said, you know, just from doing that Prague show, you know, and um, um, it's just uh, you know, to go from there to there in terms of attention and popularity, and you know, and financial sort of you know reward and stuff like that. When you maybe have been struggling for the last few years and just getting by, you know, it's and you're an instant superstar. It's gonna be, it's gotta be tough. It's gotta be tough to sort of get the balance right. Yeah, I mean, it's a. Oh, I still had Alan Bodeman's name up the whole time, guys. That was not Alan Bodeman. That was Rubio Mascaro. My bad. I never didn't remove the banner. So, man, uh, yeah. So this is coming up, guys. We're going to be doing a live watch party. The, the time change for Giles again, guys. Contact your local political representative and get him to change this daylight savings time. It is ridiculous. <laughs> you right? Stupid. Whatever you are in the world. Ah. So I'm like, I'm constantly, uh, what time is it in Greece now for Dr. T? What time is it in Giles? And like, did, when do they change their clocks? Because they changed theirs a week before you did. You just, or did you just change your? Uh. I, I messed up a time once with Dennis James. I had him on and I got my time times wrong because I didn't realize that Arizona doesn't do the time change. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, because I've done so many, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of interviews with, with bodybuilders over your side of the world. And I know EST is five, and then it's CATC is six, six hours behind, and then the seven. And then if you go West Coast, California, I know it's eight hours behind. So, I have to, you know, but um, I didn't realize that because I, and, and Dennis, like, we're doing this. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, it's not for the three quarters of an hour, mate. And he went, no, you got your times wrong. I was like, oh, shit. Because I didn't realize that. And then I realized that um, Arizona is one of those states that doesn't do the time change. They're the only one. Just, they're the only, I don't know how they got away with that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, I don't want to get in trouble here, but. For a long time, they weren't recognizing Martin Luther King Day either. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I don't want to start any political debates or uh, any kind of debates, but that is a true story. Maybe uh, it's no. maybe it's all the aliens and all the sightings or the Arizona lights and all that. <laughs> Roswell was it? No, that was New Mexico. But yeah, Arizona's got it. Sure. No, the, do you remember the Arizona lights with the the triangular? Oh, thing? the big, uh, the, the big, the big, the big triangle flying through the sky. It was yeah, like the yeah, yeah. uh, football fields. Also, Ron, it happened again the other day. I got pulled into. There's a channel here called Blaze, and it, we had UFO Week. And last year when I wasn't feeling well, I just basically couldn't get off the sofa for a week and I just watched it nonstop all day long. And I, I, I did actually go a bit crazy. I went completely down the rabbit hole and it happened again the other day. I was like, 
just Lauren's like, Charles, are, are you going to go to the gym? Or are you going to do? I, was like, I just can't stop watching this shit. <laughs> well, at least there's some footage in that, though, right? Every once in a while, they show you a little bit of footage. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's such brainless entertainment, but I do love it. <laughs> I, mean, I laugh at it now. I mean, I laugh at it. I don't think as much, you know. But I just, uh, I love the the inventiveness and the. The, the, the speculation of whether who's bullshitting and who isn't, you know? There was a, there was a show, I think it's still on, called Finding Bigfoot. I yeah. think there's two. I think there, <laughs> yeah. there's, and then there's Bigfoot Hunters. I think there's two shows. <laughs> and they've nonsense. been on for a, They never find a damn thing. It's just they'll, they'll like go, ooh, ooh. And they'll, and, and they'll hear like a rock fall from a mile in. they go, did you hear that? That was it. That was a, that was a Sasquatch right I know. There. They, they, there's, a ghost, there's a ghost program I remember years ago I watched for about two months, like nonstop. And then I was like, this is bullshit. Paul, this is just people making noises <laughs> in the dark. But you kind of get pulled in. You kind of get pulled into the whole intrigue of it, you know, because then when you realize, uh, you know, that some of these programs are just, just I mean, a, a fair play. So imagine being a content creator and that, okay, you've got to go out into the woods now and try and make us think there's aliens out there or ghosts out there or Bigfoot or whatever, yeah. you know, the bloody chupacabra or whatever it is. And <laughs> you're literally just walking around in the dark with a with a night vision camera. And it's yeah. just, I mean, you've got to like, you know, you, your living depends on it. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to get really creative and also have no, um, what's the word? Uh, sort of qualms of uh, creating just complete and utter bullshit, you know, for yeah, sake so of entertainment. Say, you, have to, you have to have no shame that you just produced three seasons of a show find, called Finding Bigfoot <laughs> and you never found a, you found some hair that ended up being some deer hair and some crap I, that ended up being bear crap or something, you know? That Skinwalker Ranch is the curse of Skinwalker Ranch is another one. I mean, every episode, you just think, what are they going to come up with this month? Because they've got this, they've got this ranch with like how many, how many acres? Yeah. And they're just going around just trying to create all this, <laughs> whatever they can. I bet they have to really brainstorm and say, look, guys, you know, we're running out of ideas to get content here. So we've, what are we going to come up with this week? You know, we've got all this equipment and stuff. We've got to make it look like everything's going haywire. So I don't know. So it's good. So, I, I, I kind of like, it's my, kind of my guilty pleasure. Yeah, I stopped with the ghost shows. I used to watch three or four regularly, and I got so angry after a while. Like, they never find anything. <laughs> it's just so, such a waste of my time. I just wasted another hour of my life. Did, but, uh, did, did you ever see the one? Oh, you probably wouldn't have seen it. It's, a, it's on YouTube. It's a famous one. There's a doctor. Well, not doctor. There's a medium guy called Derek Acora. Is he, and is he, he, he starts American to channel. Guy? And he starts to channel something, and he says, Mary loves dick. Mary oh. loves dick. You gotta, you gotta Google it because it's hilarious. Because yeah. everyone's just completely terrified, and he's actually having like a what's it called when they they get possessed? Oh, or whatever possessed? Yeah, yeah. He's the channel, 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 channel and somebody, he's just, yeah. he's just saying Mary loves dick. It became like a meme and a t-shirt and a. Yeah. I mean, you could, there's a hashtag <laughs> Mary loves dick, and it's obviously. <laughs> Oh, it's her ex-husband, Dick. She loved Mary. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just all, obviously, say there's something from the 18th century and she loves Dick. I mean, Richard. Richard, yeah. You know? yeah uh, sure. So, obviously, it's uh, it's very, very comical. Check it out on YouTube. Will do. So, I want to let everyone know, because everyone's going to be, I'm sure, in the comments, what about the live stream? What about the live stream? So, there is a free way to watch this show. It's not going to be the same as for the Arnold, uh, Ohio, and UK, where it was a dedicated live stream that was shown for free. This is going to be on Muscle Contest International's YouTube page. Yes. So this is sort of separate because I went to the Arnold Sports Festival site. That encompasses everything for the Arnold, Ohio, and UK. Uh, Muscle Contest is running this show. I won't say independently, but it's not it's not on their website. You'd have to go to their, web, their website to get info. But Muscle Contest International is going to stream it live on their YouTube uh, all day, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Nice. We're only concerned about Saturday, uh, the Open Men. Uh, I didn't see any big, really big names in the classic for Sunday, so I'm going to skip it and go to the gym and do all that stuff. So Saturday, the Eastern Standard Times are 12 o'clock noon, 12 noon, and 6 p.m. Eastern. In Brazil, they're one hour ahead of me here, so that's going to be 1 p.m. and 7 p.m., and you're now five hours ahead of me. Is that right? Correct. So that's going to be 5 p.m. for you. Which maybe you'll maybe you can do that one. I yeah, would I would yeah, not ex I would never expect you to stay up for the late late night one. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, did Patrick get back to you on your phone? Uh, nothing yet. Very unusual. Hang on, let me check if he's seen it. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Hey, mate, out. John is not ah. doing any more shows until August September. There you Thank go. You. Yeah, there you go. Well, so we started off well. At least we corrected it. Thank you, Patrick. You Tour. Go. I believe it. Yep, confirmed. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder why they had him on that list, though, because like he said, he told me straight up, I, I never heard a thing from them, Ron. They never contact. I haven't I got an email, a yeah, text, I nothing. That. I heard that. I heard that as well. So maybe he was never really, uh, never in the show. 
It was just kind of wishful thinking. But why don't they contact every single one of the uh, other Arnold Classic competitors and say, look, you know, come and come and do our show. I mean, surely that'd be an automatic thing to do because this this is an Arnold Classic in that it's not an invitational, right? Uh, it must be invitation. I don't think anybody, just anybody can do it. But why would they not invite someone like John who just took, you know, like top four at the, the Arnold? Like, why would they not invite that competitor automatically? Why would they not say to no. Samson, look, we'll pay for your flights? You know, we, we, you know, it makes me think maybe that some sponsors have involvement with... Um, or maybe they did. We don't know. Who they I mean, want in the show. Do you know what I mean? Because maybe they don't, they, they're only really focused on the Raphaels and the good vetoes. And the, I, I can't imagine you know? that they wouldn't have invited Hadi and Samson. Of course, they want big names. They want Every promoter wants all the big names they can possibly get. That only helps ticket sales, everything, if, if they're doing a pay-per-view. So I don't think they would have turned down. I bet they did ask Samson and Hadi and everybody else. Holland Any idea Sam. what the prize money is? I do not. It's kind of hard. to. They never seem to post that ahead of time, mm. and even at the shows. But uh, it's got to be up there. I don't know if it's comparable to – obviously not Ohio. That's that's crazy now. Yeah, you know, apparently Nick Walker's a little upset that some people – I did a video, but it only got like 200 views. So he's not going to be – I don't think he's mad at me. But that said he committed to the Arnold Classic for 2025, the Ohio, even yeah. if he wins the Olympia. Because he did say that on his podcast with Guy's sister Nino Jr. Okay. Says, even if I win the Olympia, I'm doing it. So that to me, it's a verbal commitment. Obviously, I know he, yeah. hasn't, he hasn't signed a contract. He hasn't you know, legally committed that he has to be at the show. But that, that's, a verbal, that's a verbal commitment saying, yeah, I'm going to do that show. So, so what's his problem? What's, what's he said now? Has he said that he's not? No, he's he didn't say that. He just doesn't like the fact that people, Duque Christian Duque made a video. I think it's just the fact that he said he committed, when, to, in his mind, commit. You know, we all have our own definitions of things. Commitment could mean I signed a contract and I'm definitely going to be there. What? So hang on. So so now he's saying he's not doing it or he's not committed or he's just no, thinking no, no, no. about it or he just doesn't like, just uh, doesn't like the fact that people said he was committed when he's not. You know, legally well, on paper. Well, committed. don't say on a podcast that you're going to do it then, because that's what people, people, all these podcasters are watching this going, well, I'll make a video about that because Nick Walker's right. in the Arnold Classic. The thing is, I mean, he's. That's what we I do. Mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, this Arnold Classic, this prize money thing, do you think that'll get the Haddies, the Derricks? Yes. The, um, yes. Yeah. Do you think that after. The, I don't. I don't think. Gonna... I don't think anybody's going to skip the Arnold anymore. I think they're all. Really? Gonna, why would you not try to make that money? Why? So even if you know, the guy was trying to figure out first first prize we know is 500, second prize has to be at least 250. Yeah. Has to be. You can't win 250 at any other show except the Olympia and the Arnold. So even if you get second place, 250, and I bet third place is still 100, right? It's got to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got to be It's got to be something. I bet they'll do it very evenly like that. Third place, $100,000? Come on. Why would you turn that down? You're. I know it's it's rough on the body. I'm not saying it's easy to stay on prep and get such a short break. Between that, but I could see all the top guys potentially doing the Arnold. I'm sorry, the Olympia, the Arnold, and unless they need to qualify for something else, a lot of them are just probably going to sit dormant. Maybe they would do a show right before the Olympia since they're already hang on, hang on. prepped. In the '90s, Flex Wheeler, uh, um, Kevin Navrone, Paul Paul Delac, Chris right. Comet, they all did the Olympia and the Arnold because it was six months apart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it was apart from that one year that Ronnie did it. I mean, it was the only really the Mr. Olympia that didn't show up to do those shows. Even Lila Brada showed up. Sean Ray did it in 96. Lila yeah. Brada did it in 95. A lot of them did it because it was six months apart. So why not? And if the prize money's gone up, then it's just going to be like, OK, then, yes, the Olympia is the main goal. But, you know, also, you know, wouldn't wouldn't hurt picking up prize money that right now is actually set up more than the Olympia. Hmm. Um, and the potential qualification, and it's six months apart. Like, why, why, why wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's even if, um, even if, say, take Derek wins the Olympia again. I mean, why wouldn't he don't do the Arnold Classic? It's only if it's six months later. Right. I mean, it'd be silly if he's if he if he holds on to the title. It'd be silly not to go and do it. And you're probably going to get Haddy. We're going to get Sam. So really, it's probably going to be the whole. You're probably going to get most of the top six of the Olympia doing the Arnold Classic because it's six months later and it's bloody fantastic prize money. So exactly. I think I think this all. Hopefully get the pros competing more than, you know, like um, even the Mr. Olympia, like Derek Lunsford, just doing the Olympia more than like more than one show a year. You yeah. Know? So it makes it's, sense. It's great for the fans. The fans want to see these guys more. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's wonderful that we've always had this tradition where there are the top few Mr. Olympia guys would do the Olympia, place top five or whatever it was that they need to qualify. We wouldn't see them again for an entire year because I get it. That's a prestige and they want to focus on the Olympia. That's a, the most important show. 
I get that. But at the same time, a lot of the fans are like, well, we want to see you again. We got to wait a whole year. Mm. So this, this is a win for the fans and the money. Come on. And these careers don't last forever. You yep. never know what's going to happen in life. And any one of these guys, this could be, could their career could end from an injury or something. Who knows? God forbid, but it could happen. So why not make all the money you possibly can in that window of time when you're competing as a pro? I, I hope we have the top three from the last. So I hope we have Hadi, Derek, and Samson. I hope we have Nick Walker because Nick Walker is kind of like, we can only speculate how he would have done at the Olympia last year. Right. You know, would he have beaten Samson? Would he have been fourth? Probably, he probably would have been third or fourth at the Olympia, let's be fair. I think so. If he had done it. So, like, really, was, the point I'm trying to make is that that top four, arguably, those four names are very, very close. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, Samson at the night show at the Arnold UK, I was there. I mean, it was very, very close. And like you said, Samson even got a couple of first place votes. So that's the, you know, the two and three arguably in the world. Yep. you got Derek, the, you know, many people, I felt like Derek Hardy should have won the Olympia last year, but I wasn't shocked that Derek did. So those top four, those four guys are very, very, very close. So it'd be interesting to see if like Nick Walker did go and do the Arnold and beat Derek Hardy and Samson. And then it would really build, actually, I think it would actually benefit the Olympia to build momentum. Because um, by the time when we, we saw Sean Ray in 96, he took fifth place at the Arnold Classic. And then he went and jumped up to second at the Olympia to Dorian. Hmm. Do you remember? Do you remember? I don't remember him. He had the Arnold. hoops in his ear. Remember he had the hoops in his earrings. He was fifth at the Arnold that year. No and he got fifth at the, the Ironman. And then, because obviously like Flex Wheeler, Paul Dillette and Vince Taylor all beat him. And mm. then he went to the Olympia in 96 and then he took second. Remember when he shaved his head and he had the hoop earrings? Oh, that was his first year with the shaved head. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, he jumped up to second place. Do you know what I mean? So so really those 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 guys, you know, it's very, very close between them. So I think if they if those guys, four guys and the other guys like Andrew Jack and Chris all do the Arnold Classic, then I think it's actually going to benefit them because it'll build hype, especially if Nick Walker beats Derek or Hadi oh, or, you know, or, or, or Samson beats Hadi, you know, at the Arnold Classic. And then I think it'll build more and more hype because you know what it's like with the amount of shows there is. It's, um, you can easily forget about guys. Do you know what I mean? If they, if they haven't competed. So, I mean, the, the Hadi winning this Arnold recently, that makes the Olympia that much more exciting already. Yeah. Now, yeah. A lot of people say, and I kind of felt the way that Hadi, that version of Hadi would have beat the Derek that we saw at the Olympia a couple months mm. before that. So yeah. now everyone's like, well, maybe now Hadi can get his title. Like it builds suspense drama just more storylines the more storylines and drama because it's, it's not the most exciting sport in the world so anything that we can do to enhance that anticipation and excitement around it i think it's a good thing i i think hadi and sean clarita are going to win their olympia titles back this year wow yeah mm -hmm. i really do i really do because i had clarita winning the, the the olympia last year um i know because on the second day of the night show at the finals it looked sensational i thought okay he's done enough now to claw it back and, and beat keon Right. Um, and I did actually have Hadi winning, but I wasn't blown away or shocked that Derek won because it was, you know, they were, they had plus and minuses to their physique. But um, I've just got a funny feeling that that's what's going to happen this year. I know it's early to tell, but um, uh, and it'd be interesting to see the rematch between um, Nick and Samson as well, because obviously we never we didn't get to see that at the Olympia last year. I'll tell you, a classic would be 10 times more exciting. I don't want this to happen, but I'm saying it would be 10 times more exciting if Bumstead I think his baby's coming out any day now. <laughs> yeah, she's she's out here, isn't she? Yeah. If he decides, if he makes an announcement at some point, probably not till later in the season, that guys, thanks for the memories. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm good. Five titles was awesome. Five. I, he's got five or yeah, he's got no. Five. He's gonna win six and, and retire. That's why. No, I'm he's saying. got he has five. I'm saying he has. Five. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 But yeah, yeah I think you, that's more likely. He's gonna retire before he. It could happen, but I think I oh, I think no. he will for the fans. I think he I don't think he would do that to the fans because everyone wants everybody would want at least to say goodbye to him, you know. Yeah, as, as I, a champion on stage, I don't think I, he would do that. I maintain that he's going to win six and then call it a day, and then um, I think I think Wesley's next in line. Could be, or you know, Ramon could get a fire under his ass and come back better than ever. Yeah, uh, could happen. Could happen. Ruffin's still a, a force. Earth could improve. I mean, it's. I, I do think Wesley's got a lot of momentum and hype, and he's got a hell of a physique. So, and it's another big, tall guy. So, it, he could very well be the next one. The next one. We'll, we'll talk. Yeah. We'll, that's for future discussion. Future Ooh. discussion. Anywho, uh, guys, I know it hasn't been an hour, but that's okay. So, this Saturday, <laughs> guys, I think I'm going to wait to post this on Friday because I've been looking at the uh, YouTube algorithm and so forth and trying to trying to get a sense of when the best time to post this. So tomorrow, probably, if we're putting this on a Friday, join us at the watch party. We're going to watch this live. 
Giles will join us for judging. I don't want mm -hmm. him to stay up for the night show. I want him to get his beauty sleep, even though he's a handsome fella. Still needs his beauty sleep. Saturday, 12 o'clock Eastern, 6 p.m. Eastern for the finals. We're going to be doing a live watch party. Big Mike Cox. I know I can get Mike to join us. He's, a, he's great on these. We're going to have a good time mm -hmm. watching along on the Muscle Contest International YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber to that, help them out. Of course, where's my where's my banner for solid subscribe? I'm Jen. Oh, Jen. Yeah, uh, Jen, Jen's sort of been hanging back from the from being in the shows on live, but uh, that's okay. okay. If she wants, she wants to join. Come on, Jen, she, more the merrier. Come on, she's, she's always get, welcome. Get, get the team back together. It's good fun, good banter. Yes, follow that on Instagram. Right here, yeah. I think one guy complained, and I don't know. I I never I didn't I never had any objections. I I like to have her. I like to have different viewpoints because you know sometimes. Yeah. Jen knows, the stuff. Jen knows her stuff, mate. She's she's been she's more more right than she's wrong. She's been around. She's been around bodybuilding for years Ooh, now. She's not stupid. She's Another stupid. thing is, is you don't want the same opinion because sometimes me, you, and Mike kind of all have the same opinions. You know, <laughs> great minds think alike and all that. Not that so if if four people, if three people all just say this guy looks great, this guy looks crap, people are like, huh? Okay, and we all have the same pr prediction for the top five. Yeah. So it's good to have different viewpoints on there. Everyone's got it's an objective. Objective, subjective sport. We all have our own our own uh, filters and opinions and all that. So yeah, we'll see who joins us. I mean, Goon, I Goon was invited. He ended up falling asleep last time. We never know <laughs> who's going to pop up. So we know for sure I'll be here. Giles, you'll be there. Pretty sure Mike will be there. But anyway, yep. we have a great time, and guys, you can follow along in the live chat. Put all your own opinions, predictions, argue with each other. Uh, I delete all the comments that are horrible and obscene. Because you guys, come on, some of you guys are awful. But most of you guys are awesome, and we love you. So please join us for that. Uh, appreciate you guys watching this, the Power Hour, and all the other stuff on this channel. Please check out the Power Hour that we put out earlier in the week, which discussed Giles' European tour with none other than Ronnie Coleman. It was a great discussion. It was kind of like going around with the Beatles or something, it looked like. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was, uh, I, I've, I've, I, I mean, I literally, you know when we did the, uh, the Power Hour last week, it was the first day I got back. And it ha and the, the the tiredness hadn't hit me yet. I was actually yeah. still full of energy. The energy was good. I was I had really good energy. And all last week, I mean, I was just absolutely exhausted. I still managed to get three training sessions in and get my cardio Ooh. back on, but um, I I was so tired. I mean, I was just like it reminded me of when I did the Phil Heath tour, and I just couldn't. I just could barely get off the sofa for a week afterwards. I was so tired. Oh. But it was um, it was it was it, like I said, it was all worth it. It was fantastic. It was an amazing, amazing experience. So um, and like I said, watch this space for more tours because maybe by the time this comes out, I might even have the 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 next tour announced. So uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah, don't go anywhere, guys. So to do that, you have to subscribe, like, and ring the bell. If you don't ring the bell, you don't get the notifications. So great content on this channel. I'm trying to make it better and better for you guys. The more views, the more subscribers I get, the better and better I can make things as time goes by. I want to thank you, Giles Tiger Thomas, broadcasting all the way from Tiger Towers in the United Kingdom. Your expertise, insights, and uh, bad puns are always well appreciated. <laughs> I love you, Giles. Like my, my pleasure. Friend. My brother from another mother in another another continent. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching this episode of Power Hour. And we'll see you right here again next time.